Hey everyone, Kita Sean here. So welcome back to another Fate Grand Order video. So this video mainly focuses on those who play the USA version of Fate Grand Order. As you guys know, the 7th anniversary is coming really soon and that means Guaranteed Gacha is coming. I'll be breaking down on which Guaranteed Gacha is best to roll. Of course, it depends on your needs, but as someone who played the JP version, I have the power of clairvoyance. I can help you prepare for the future. So without any further ado, let's get right to it. We'll start off with Saber Gacha number one. In this gacha, we have Oita Soji, Miyamoto Musashi, Nero Bride, Arthur, Sigurd, and Shiki. Let's go ahead and start off with the single target sabers first. The single target sabers in this gacha are good. Of course, if you are looking for broken single target hitters, you may want to look at Berserkers, which we will be talking about later in this video. But if you're strictly looking at sabers, this is the lineup to roll. Okta does fall off once Medusa Saber comes out, but for the time being in the USA version, she is the top quick single target saber. Nero is Art, and the other two are Busters. Nero and the other two, I mean, these three actually stay top at their positions even right now in jp so yeah th they're actually not bad roles but again there are better single target hitters in this game and both arthur and shiki on the other hand the aoe's these two are probably the bad pulls from this gotcha yeah shiki is you know a collaboration character and stuff like that and i know there's many fans of her and she's actually really solid she's actually up there in my opinion when it comes to aoe sabers but again there is just other AoE servants in this game that are just so much better. Uh, again, Berserkers and other extra classes. So I, I do think this entire gacha is a skip if you're looking at gameplay purposes. But again, if you're looking at single target sabers, this is definitely the gacha to roll. On to Saber Gacha number 2. The AoE Sabers in this Gacha are Ibuki Doji, Muramasa, Okta Soji, Alter Swimsuit, and Charlemagne. As I stated earlier and most likely will keep saying it, there are better AoE Servants that you will be able to take anywhere. As much as I like these 4 Servants, some permanent Servants who are Sabers currently exist in the game and are just better. And in the future, Art Saber Yamato Takeru will overtake as the best Art AoE Saber. Both Benny Emma and the Trunk Sisters are average art single target sabers, and Astafo is a below average quick saber in my opinion. If you already have Nero Bride or any other Berserker art single target, whether 5 or 4 star, you can definitely skip Benny Emma and the Trunk Sisters. And as I stated earlier, Medusa Saber will become the best quick single target saber in the game when she comes out. So, yeah, Astafo Saber is a 100% skip. And if you really want a quick saber like right now, then just roll for Okta Soji. I believe this gacha in general is a skip. The chances of you getting a servant that you want from this lineup is also very low. So I would honestly just save your Saint Quartz from this gacha. Let's now move on to the archers. The first archer banner is unfortunately a skip. Out of the four servants, Gilgamesh is the best. I believe Gilgamesh is hands down the best AoE archer or the best archer in the game. He is the only archer that is worth it in this gacha. You can argue that Plotomius might be the best, but I still think Gil is hands down the best. Ishtar is an average archer. I do believe she will get a buff eventually, but again, we have no idea when that's going to happen. So in a way, she is an investment. Both Arutoria Swimsuit Archer and Mori Arty Archer are the best single target 5 star archers in the game, which honestly is very surprising. We haven't had a new single target 5 star archer in a very long time, so I do believe it's about time we get a new one, right, Lasango? Uh, Fujino is actually right now in JP the best single target archer in the game, and she is a 4 star because recently she got a buff, and that buff literally just made her the best single target archer in the game so that's not going to happen for a while in the usa version thus i again i do believe this gotcha is a complete skip if you're looking for a single target uh, archer uh just go with a different class that's uh, that has better single targets again berserker the next archer banner is also skip. Both Janu and Sei Shonagung are AoE servants, both art and quick, but again, there are just better AoE servants you can use. If you were to roll this banner, I, I think Orion might be your best target. His MP buffs himself, which allows him to be a servant great for challenge quests. So yeah, I mean, the chances of you getting the servant you want from this banner, I mean, there's only three, is higher, but I, I do think it might be a skip. But again, if you really want one of these servants, then yeah, go ahead and roll. I'm not stopping you there. 
onto the Lancer Banner. So the first Lancer Banner is actually pretty solid. Ereshkigil is a great buster AoE servant, and Brynhild is arguably the best single target Lancer in the game right now as a buster type. Tamamo Lancer is an average servant unfortunately and as for Skasaha she got a really strong buff recently in JP but there are arguments about whether it makes her top tier or not personally for me I don't know if it's top tier but I think it's a great buff and it makes her actually you know solid in the game I don't think it's I don't think it's groundbreaking or anything like that but I, I do think that like uh, it does make her on the better sides of things but again there have been arguments where people are saying it's just not strong enough so they put her like on the bottom tier which again is still kind of a little confusing but I, I, I think she's solid I, I really do so yeah I, I think this first Lancer banner is solid I think um, Tamamo Lancer is probably the uh, the only unfortunate servant to pull from this one but I, I don't see any problem rolling this one if you really need a Lancer uh, such as AoE or single target. The second Lancer banner is actually a great banner because the chances of you pulling a great servant is very high. There are only three servants in this one. Sakamoto Ryoma is the weakest out of the three, but Milseen and Romulus are just great pulls to have. If you can pull Milseen, then you can get a single and AoE in one, who is also the best AoE Lancer in the game. And Romulus is just, you know, a great AoE Buster Archer to have. So yeah, I think this banner is great to have especially if you're targeting Melcine. I think this is a good chance to roll for her. Now we move on to the writer banner and I'm just gonna go ahead and save some time here for the first writer banner just skip it. The second writer banner honestly is a skip as well but it is better than the first one. Da Vinci writer is actually a great AoE arts writer to have and both Rhinus and Constantine are solid supports but again there are just better support servants in the game. Now we move on to the casters you only roll the first caster banner for both Skasa Haskadi and Merlin both of these servants are still great support I think the reason why you will skip this banner is because Skasa Haskadi ruler is coming out soon that ruler version will end up being the go-to quick support when it comes to farming but I still think caster Skasa Haskadi is great for challenge quests same thing with Merlin he is great for challenge quests so the second caster banner you're just rolling for Castoria honestly like she's literally hands down the best support in the game I mean arts farming arts single target challenge quest or regular quest uh, she's great with other servants too that aren't art uh, but Miss Crane is also a pretty solid pickup as a support as well for challenge quests but the other two are just like kind of whatever you don't really need them and again yeah you're just rolling for Castoria literally for the second caster banner <laughs> So now we move on to assassins and assassin banner number one in my opinion is a skip. Uh, the three female assassins are just not great. They're way below average in my opinion. Hopefully they buff them some way. Uh, King Hassan is great as a single target buster assassin but I mean assassins in general just don't really get the greatest treatment in this game which is very unfortunate because I think there are a lot of great assassins in uh, FGO like just character wise so yeah it really sucks to see that they're always weak i mean yeah there are you know great assassins like uh, tezco polika i think he's hands down the best aoe assassin in the game um or hands down the best attacking assassin in the game but um yeah assassins don't really get that great of a treatment so hopefully all these assassins do get buffs but for now i think this is hands down a skip Assassin banner number two, uh, a lot of you guys are going to be rolling this one because of Koyan Skaya Assassin. She is the best of support all of you guys need. She's the engine literally where it starts for Buster team setups. Uh, the other two, Kama is still a great single target quick assassin. Semiramis is an AoE assassin, unfortunately on the uh, average side, but hey, she'll still get a buff from Koyan Skaya, so yeah you know <laughs> but yeah literally coin sky is the reason why you're rolling this banner and the chances of getting her is actually really solid as well i mean only three servants so uh yeah i think you do have a high chance of getting coin sky now we move on to berserkers i think both banners for berserkers are great i think the second banner is just way better probably hands down the best banner in this entire lineup which we'll get in a bit but let's talk about berserker banner number one First, you have Kintoki. Kintoki is hands down the best single target servant in the game. Like, there's no argument. If you can find a better argument, 
let me know because I want to know what you think. But Kintoki, hands down, I mean, he's a Berserker, does a lot of damage. Buster does a lot of damage. Obviously, you need the support to do that. But still, Kintoki, hands down, I, arguably the best servant in the entire game. That's how good Kintoki is, in my opinion. Uh, the other two single targets are uh, Mysterious Heroin X Alter and Hijikata. I think they're solid. I, I, I think they're still great single targets, but Kintoki just takes the cake, in my opinion. Plus, I mean, you do have other permanent servants in this game that are good, that are arts, though, uh, Vlad and Galatea. But there's also an upcoming swimsuit servant who is just pretty strong as well, uh, Castoria Berserker. She's really good. Like, she's below Kintoki, in my opinion but she she's really really strong too but kintoki hands down best single target servant in the game uh raiko i still think she is very solid as well but the next banner uh just takes the cake honestly like if you're gonna roll for an aoe uh servant that's a, a berserker then you roll for the next banner that we're gonna be talking about Berserker banner number two is hands down the best banner in this entire lineup. You have Arjuna Alter and Morgan who are the best AoE Berserkers in this game. Heck, they're the best AoE servants in this game. Miyamoto Musashi actually still has that title as well until Ibuki Doji comes in. Once Ibuki Doji comes in, the swimsuit version Berserker, Miyamoto Musashi does slide down a bit, but she's still a very strong Berserker to have. So just rolling this banner kind of solves your problem for aoe servants like if you want to roll for ibuki doji yeah but this banner allows you to not roll for ibuki doji if that makes sense so yeah this is a very very strong banner and i can't argue enough to roll for this one if you don't have any of the three servants in this banner so it it, it does not hurt on which one you roll for plus if you want to just increase their mp this is again a very solid one as well so yeah berserker banner number two i can't argue enough to roll for this one this is just too strong of a banner not to roll so we're going to go into the extra class lineup now and i do believe there is only one servant you target when it comes to extra class but i still want to go over each banner because i still think there are servants that are still solid to have but again, I do believe there's only one target and that's going to be on the last banner that we talk about. So let's go ahead and start talking extra class number one here. So extra class banner number one, you have Amaksa Shiro, you have Sherlock Holmes, you have Dantes, and you have Janu Avenger. Um, this one, personally, I think it is a skip, uh, but I do think that Sherlock Holmes is still a great support to have. Uh, I think he's going to be great in challenge quests. And then you also have Janu, who is going to be a really strong attacker, single target Avenger. Uh, she's great for going against, you know, rulers. And she's also really great for challenge quests. So uh, if you're going to roll for this one, it's going to be those two. The other two, Dantes and Amaksa Shiro, uh, they just fell off super hard, uh, especially Dantes. Like, there's going to be better quick AoE servants in the future. Uh, I mean, his other version, the other Dantes, is going to be a lot stronger so yeah you're gonna go ahead and just probably skip this one if anything extra servants banner number two does have some really solid servants uh you have nobunaga and space ishtar great for aoe damage uh you also then have some servants that are great for kind of unique party setups you got uh mothman you got uh bunny toria then you also have swimsuit bb but I don't think it's enough to be like, yeah, I want to roll for this one. But I think this is just more like, oh, you know what? I really like this servant. I'll roll for this banner kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I don't think extra banner number two is really worth it. But if you're, again, looking for, uh, you know, a, a solid AoE Avenger, I think this is still a great banner to roll. But for the other three, kind of like if you want to just make a unique party setup, you roll for this one. So extra class Banner number three does have some solid pickups. Uh, Karen, I think, is one of the best rulers in this game when it comes to AoE. Of course, Melsing comes out next year, so if anything, you could hold off and just 
role for Melusine's banner next year. Uh, but right now, I do think Karen is just really strong. Uh, Moriarty is also a really good pickup. I know some of you guys actually rolled for Moriarty not too long ago. So if you already did, then you can skip this one. Uh, Karen is honestly not a priority in my opinion. Uh, but again, if you want to hold off, just hold off until next year because again, Melusine does come out as a swimsuit servant. And again, she's popular. And I, I, I do think she's actually on par with Karen. So it's either Karen or Melusine in a way. But I think uh, Moriarty is still very close to them as well. So picking up Karen or picking up Moriarty is a, a solid pickup. Himiko, on the other hand, um, she did drop, unfortunately. So uh, th that's the unfortunate part. I actually really like Himiko. I really like her gameplay, but she did drop. Uh, so she's probably someone you want to kind of... Uh, skip on uh, for Avenger comma swimsuits uh, she is very solid I think she's a great pickup I mean she does get some banners uh, along the way but um, yeah I think comma Avenger is a nice pickup for AoE wise and quick I uh, Tida, Tida is the easy skip unfortunately um, I mean Tida is so cool and but she's just really bad uh, hopefully they can find a way to fix her but in the end she's probably the worst pickup in this banner a uh, Dantes does come out two years from now for you guys but I mean that's two years and I don't think Dantes is uh, top tier or anything like that I do think John new altar is just way stronger than Dantes uh, or when it comes to single target Avengers um, but I, I, I do think Dantes is better than Tyra when he comes out then you have moon cancer Kiara moon cancer Kiara is strong she is really strong uh, but I mean you know, Arquade is coming out for anniversary, so if you're gonna go with a Moon Cancer that's AoE, uh, it's Arquade, right? Arquade is just really strong compared to Kiara. So, yeah, I mean, this banner is solid, but I think it's a pretty easy skip, if anything, because again, you have Milsine coming out next year, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna try and roll for her. And uh, I do think Arquade is the better Moon Cancer, and then, you know, you have other uh, Avengers and stuff like that so yeah I, I think this is a skip honestly but it's not bad as a banner so extra class banner number four is probably going to be a skip uh Okta Soji Alter uh she did get buffs over time and she was strong during those times but now you know times have changed uh you do have a servant called Dolman who exists really strong AoE quick servant I mean quick that's honestly really cool to have a quick up there right uh but yeah dolman is just w way superior compared to the aoe ultra egos in my opinion plus tiamut is coming out soon for you guys tiamut uh everyone is going to roll for her i mean that's a no-brainer right uh, everyone wanted her in fgo so yeah tiamut is going to be coming in and yes she will be better than okta soji Alter, but I do believe Dolmon is the better servant and plus he's actually in a guaranteed gotcha in this lineup He's on the last one which again we'll be talking about and that's probably the extra class banner that I believe you should roll for But uh, we'll talk about that in a bit uh, Kiara uh, just below average now like she's not as strong as she was before then you have uh, Your single target alter ego you have uh, Melta Lilith she has dropped very hard, unfortunately. Um, I mean, there aren't that many single target alter egos that are great in this game. But if there are, I mean, you have uh, Paul Bunyan, who is in another banner, which we'll be getting into. And then you also have Stonai. So I, I think those two are just great. But I mean, Melta Lilith obviously is the solo uh, quick alter ego so um yeah sh she's unfortunately not as great as she was before hopefully they do something with her in the future uh then the foreigners foreigners have uh dropped pretty low unfortunately um i, I do think they're still nice to have against berserkers hulksai i i mean i love using hulksai even to this day but even i know she's not as great as before uh i mean Kukulu Khan is just so strong and then you have Koyan Skaya, right? Uh, and then you also have uh, Voyager. So I, I think Kukulu Khan and Koyan Skaya are just way up there. So yeah, f uh, skipping out on Hulksai is I think is fine. And then um, Abby, I still think Abby is probably the better 
single target foreigner in this game i mean we haven't really had a single target foreigner in quite some time now or i mean the last one was uh the australian servant right uh it was uh wonjina right so we do get her but i still think abby is better uh and then you do also have mysterious heroine x uh foreigner but i mean yeah if you have abby or mysterious heroine x i think you should completely be fine but um yeah this banner i i think is a skip so extra banner number five is most likely a skip as well king protea is just not as great as a aoe attacker abby swimsuit is you know a good solid support for farming but not necessary and then you have van gogh who is great for challenge quests so if anything i would pick up van gogh then voyager is also really good for farming as well but young guifei easy skip so if you're gonna roll this one it's either for van gogh or voyager but i do believe this banner is a skip extra class banner number six is a very strong banner five out of the six servants in this banner are great pickups one of them being a must-have uh, one of them honestly a little bit above average uh, you don't really need but it's always nice to pick up and then um, the one servant you don't need from this banner is going to be jack de Murray. jack de Murray is honestly just whatever's uh, you don't really need jack de Murray, so jack de Murray is that one servant that you don't want to pull from this banner uh Dolman is a strong quick aoe servant great for farming and even if you already have Dolman, uh, leveling up his mp is always nice paul bunyan is a single target outer ego again you don't really need paul bunyan but i mean i, I do think it's a nice have in your caldea that bazette is just amazing when it comes to challenge quest arguably the best challenge quest servant in this game uh, I think Bazette is always a nice have. Like you're probably not gonna take her on uh, story boss fights and stuff like that, but challenge quests, she is a must have. Uh, then you have Coyon Sky of Darkness, a great foreigner when it comes to Buster. Uh, I, I think Coyon Sky is a very very nice pickup. I mean, you also have Kukulu Khan who's coming out. It's it's either Kukulu Khan or. Coyon Sky of Darkness. I think both of those servants are very fun when it comes to gameplay and very strong. So it's really up to you who you want, but I think Coyon Sky of Darkness is always a nice pickup. And then Oberon. Like, Oberon is that one servant you must have when it comes to Fate Grand Order. He is a support servant that is just top tier. Like, always helps out when you need MP, gives you more damage support. Like, Oberon is, yeah. SSS, SSS, SSS class, in my opinion. So, if you want your Buster servants to actually do well, do the farming, uh, do more damage, yeah, Oberon is that servant that will help you get to uh, everything you need there. So, Oberon can go with anyone as well. Like, this goes very well with any servant and just a must have. So, if you're going to roll for this banner, it's obviously targeting for Oberon, but it doesn't hurt to have Dolman, Bazette, or Koyan Sky of Darkness. I, and I'm going to go ahead and just throw Bunyan in there as well, but uh, skippable servant, Jack DeMurray. So there you guys have it. That's my opinion on the upcoming guaranteed gotcha for Fate Grand Order USA 7th anniversary. So I mostly just talked about the banners you should roll when it comes to gameplay. And yeah, Oberon, Coyan Sky of Light, Castoria are must-haves. Uh, I mean, attacking servants like Dolman, uh, you also have like the Berserkers. That I mean, banner number two for Berserkers is just super strong. Like, I think they're also must-haves too if you want to make your life easier when it comes to FGO gameplay. But I do think it's also important to understand that, hey, you should probably roll for a character you really want. Like, if it, even though it's gameplay, even though it's like you just want to uh, read their story or you just like the servant in general, I think that's also something to keep in mind as well. Personally, I always want to roll for servants that I don't have. And I sometimes also roll for servants that like, you know what, I actually really want to read their story kind of thing. So that, that's just me. But uh, I understand that if you really care about gameplay, yeah, just go for those servants who will help you when it comes to gameplay. But yeah, that's basically going to be about it. Let me know in the comment section below which banner you're going to be rolling for. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.